Just a quick opinion on uh, products and where to purchase. I buy very, very few things from uh, average retailers like uh, West Marine or the, the local ship store up here. Uh, they just jack the price up so much. I buy a lot off eBay every once in a great while Amazon. I'm not a big Amazon fan. I just don't like the way they sort things. It's a pain if you if you put in something you get the strangest results and and then you only get 15 of them on a page so I, I like to look through thousands and I look through weeks to find a deal like the battery charger that is uh, about $1,800 new I think I paid 900 for it and somebody had one the brand new in a box they were wanting to sell they want to get rid of it um, sometimes you take your chances but when you buy from eBay you got PayPal and, and they back you up I bought some things before that that didn't turn out like they should have and PayPal, uh, PayPal gave me my money back, or if, if the seller didn't give a refund like he said he would, and they're responsible for shipping. If, if just just do your research, um, see some other things. And there are things um, like the, the, these hatch covers. They didn't turn out perfect, but they were a third of the price if I had bought them retail because they were on clearance from Defender. Um, and I found Defenders cheaper than than eBay quite often. Uh, it's, just just look around uh, if you're not in a big hurry for something and especially if it's a high dollar thing like that battery charger it is definitely worth spending the time to to sit back and wait uh, put it on a watch list on eBay and just wait and wait and wait and then when when an auction comes along and the price is right keep your eye on it and, hey you save a grand so just spend a little time and then do your research and, and ask around for the right products and don't think you got to go to West Marine to buy it as I say, they're the most overpriced marine place that I have found yet. So this is underneath my berth. It's kind of a pain. It's not like new boats where the whole thing would pick up. Plus, like I say, this is a Pullman berth. So this is cell storage. Say so that is a dinghy cover. This is a spinnaker. That is a storm cell. Plus, I have a working jib in here. And where I tuck down my Magma uh, Pure Sign battery charger, uh, it's, it's a great, nice, dry spot for it. Plus, it puts out a little bit of heat in the wintertime. It, it's kind of nice. And that uh, helps keep the, the bed a little warmer. Uh, try to get all this going. This is the air conditioning the heat pump. Uh, I've shown it from the other side, but this is it from the underneath the berth. Where's the back of the drawer? And this is a solenoid for the windlass. Um, yeah, it's real exciting. Uh, I definitely, if, you, if, you, if you're looking to spend the, the big bucks on a charger inverter, uh, definitely recommend the Magnum. Uh, I've not had the first problem with it whatsoever. It, it's not as tunable as I would like it to be. Because if all batteries are different. And it would have been nice to be able to, to set it up better for my batteries, but uh, it just wasn't possible. Um, let's see, the head. Everybody loves the head. Uh, this is a Jabsco twist and lock. Problems I've had with this thing. There's a gasket up here for when you're pumping and you're flipping the valve over where you shut off your inlet water which is the black line here this gasket for some reason gets really warped and it doesn't seal you keep getting water in here and then there's a gasket here that has a heavy flapper valve on it and the whole point in the twist and lock the shaft the bottom of the shaft has a point on it and it pushes down on this to keep water from coming back into the head because we're I don't know it's hard to tell I think my water line is about here. Yeah, that's that's handy. It's like 70 bucks and it came with the boat and I've never used it. I don't get that close when I'm showering, but nobody wants to look at toilet paper either. So, I mean, there is an anti-siphon line, but there's a, water, a lot of water sitting in that line. So it will come back in here, even with the joker valve, which is back here. And the joker valve does not stop the water from coming back in. That's not its purpose. That's to stop the big stuff from coming back. But this little flapper valve is what keeps the water from coming back. So it, it, when you're pumping the water out, it lifts it up and goes out, and then when you push it down, it stops it. Um, but that little flapper valve is a piece of shit. I don't know why. 
they just don't last very long. Uh, maybe a year and then the water starts seeping back and then whatever water, it, it ends up being about a quarter full with the water back flowing from that pipe, which is not good because anything you flush down that pipe ends up back in the toilet no matter how much you flush it. And what else we have in here? Uh, this is the switch for my, you know, this is where you sit when you're taking a shower. And this is the factory shower sump, which is really nice. I do need to redo my tea because you can tell. Uh, I replaced the drain. They had a through hole in there, just a little mushroom through hole. And it, you never could get all the water out, so I had to cut a hole. There was no access to it anywhere. This is ridiculous. but So I had to cut a hole and put an inspection plate, which was good because there's all kinds of crap down there from the chain locker and this when the boat was built. But I replaced that. So when you're sitting here, you're taking a shower, and the water gets high enough, you pull the switch, of course you can hear it sucking the water out, and I put a well gulper 220 in there, it's a diaphragm pump, and you don't have to worry, if, if you have a boat that has a strainer, it's just a, it's a, it's just a little bitty strainer that you have to have to keep the pump, the pump from getting all geeked up and, and full of hair and scum, it all gets caught in that strainer, and if you take a lot of showers, Especially if you have multiple people, you take a lot of showers. I have a view from the outside. You, uh, it gets funky, and you have to clean it about once a month, and that ain't fun. These are the uh, Pompano uh, Bomar hood. I think it's Bomar. Uh, I actually got these off of eBay. They're originally. I mean, these are the really nice stainless. Uh, plus, they come with screens. I don't usually keep the screens in there especially in the winter time because I don't open them I get a better I get some of that light out of there I had to have the trim rings made which cost almost as much as these I got six of these for about 1100 bucks delivered it's a crazy deal because they're about seven hundred dollars a piece and a little dog legs up here really nice really heavy of course they weren't really made for this boat you can kind of see the angle on it that angle shouldn't be there they should be tilted down and I shouldn't have had to put the trim rings in there, but the, it sticks out a little far. But for that money, and these are some of the little uh, little foil things I was telling you about that I do. I just cut the holes in them, slide it over. Not only do I get privacy, but it keeps the light out, or keeps the, the temperature warmer in here. Uh, it keeps the light out. And on the other side is the dock. And the, the boat that used to be right there, I don't know about the guy. He was okay. He was a little weird. But it seemed like every time I was taking a shower, he was on the cell phone. Of course, we have really horrible cell phone service there, so maybe that's why he was there. But he was on the cell phone, like, pacing back and forth. I'm like, that's a little creepy. So I came up with some ways to, uh, to get some privacy. But I put, you know, we were looking at the, uh, the hatch covers earlier. You can see where the, the ring is from that thing I was working on. Let me tell you what, I, I took these off. I don't normally take these off in the wintertime. But dude, it get dark in here. And that's just a little bit of light coming around from the top. I'll flip it over, maybe a little uh, bend correctly. A little better. A couple of other things up here in the head. Uh, I've got this one turned this way for, the, for light reasons. Really don't use the fan much. Uh, but these are Kemfros. Uh, most of them you see have the little push button in the middle. These were kind of an accident, but they were they were definitely a blessing. They have the little remotes here. See the switch. You get a white light, a red light, and a rheostat for the fan. Which that little blue LED is silly because I know the fan's on. But I've got one of these in the berth. I actually just stuck a screwdriver in there and broke that LED out because I didn't want to have that on all night. But it's variable speed. Infinite, not just reposition. Plus, uh, when I take a shower, I use the red light as the white light. Yeah, it gets kind of bright when you're sitting down here, especially first thing in the morning, and it's like you don't want to deal with anything. But that's the reason I've actually got it tilted towards the wall, but I've got it tilted down because uh, I was I keep my fenders in my chain locker. Uh, I was using it to. I need that white light here in a second. I was using it to to try to get some ventilation in there. Something, yeah, all that's going to get painted. This is on, this is the bottom side of my windlass, and something you may not think about. Uh, this is the hole from the old windlass. That really needs to be plugged up better than what they did. 
but this is where the chain comes through and you don't think about it but that anchor locker and that chain you get a lot of cold air coming in there I just I had a different piece that fit in there correctly and plugged it up but couldn't find this this year I just shoved a rag in there uh, but that keeps a lot of cold air out and boy you notice that when you're sitting right here and your back is up against there and you're taking a shower you notice all that cold air coming in something else I've done I've added these uh, uh, what is the name of these people uh, let's say I got one right here this is what I also use to well, they're camcos uh, this is what I use on my water hose when I fill my tanks in the winter time now uh, but I, I rigged it up where I've got quick disconnects on each end here and then a shut off here so if I ever need to work on the water inside of the boat I just twist that and then the water shut off I actually don't have to go out to the spigot and turn it off and then I've got a quick, quick disconnect on the other end I guess all this is getting painted this year I did the sides but it didn't turn it real well it's still cracked uh, so love the fans this has turned out real well you have to change them this is every six months uh, but I use quite a bit so it's kind of depending and this is the Johnson washdown pump the pump is fine strainer and everything I've got it disconnected because it does it does freeze on the upside so I drain it winter time just let it drain down in here the only problem I've had with this is the switch up in the anchor locker uh, if you look these things up they come with a rocker switch and a fuse the fuse is corroded and, and fell out or just broken apart and it stopped working and the switch has corroded on the inside they did send me a new panel it took me a while to to tell them I told them I needed a switch for this thing and they sent me the internal pressure switch well, what's wrong with these people but I think the new one is starting to do the same thing so I'm just gonna throw that stupid panel away I wouldn't buy another another one from Johnson pumps you know their pump is fine I've not had any trouble with this thing but the switch and I said they did replace it but at the same time when something fails you when you, when you need it wash down pump isn't truly critical but when you need something and it fails you it just kind of pisses you off uh, and they were such idiots about I need a new switch the other one's falling apart you need to pictures yeah it got dark in there so I've, I've not had that one covered up this year yet I kind of forget how dark it gets in here plus uh, the only problem with these you do get a little moisture behind them uh, so every once in a while you get a warm day just take that off it's the black on the inside Stuck a little piece of tape on that. Yeah. Tell you what. I say put all these back on here. Buddy, you got some good sleeping. Because it's dark. Now, this is the berth. You can see it a little bit. I also, on some of these, especially in the berth, I, I make a, a round one and I put on the outside of it. It makes it even darker. I like it dark when I sleep. This is, uh, it's, it's not all nice and pretty but it wasn't the original reason I bought this thing the original reason I bought it, I was looking for a um, I'm just trying to make it look nice I was looking for a uh, something to hang around the cockpit while you're sitting out there in the summertime that the Sun will just roast you and it's not always overhead I do have the uh, the bimini there's the, the wheel I do have the the bimini and the connector and everything and of course the full enclosure in the winter time uh, if, during the summer you, you need something to hang around the side so I thought you know these things they're they're really they're actually they're silk it's five yards long and about a yard wide it is an Indian saree uh, they're pretty cool looking and I think I got it for like 15 bucks yeah it was used and it had, had a little bit of a curry smell to it or something when I originally got it uh, but I ended up hanging it over there to block some of the light during the summer it looks pretty cool from the outside but just to block some of the light yeah it kind of added a little bit of color and it just it just changes the mood inside the boat a little bit when you're sitting in here rather than than this bright I've uh, been keeping it closed up summertime opened it up a lot more uh, winter time of course this side like I say the docks right there and there's only two boats down there but still you, know, you do lose some privacy this is the only dock in the marina like this but it's also one of the best slips this is uh, 
linen. I like linen. I like textures. I just like the look of the, the linen, so I had somebody, actually had my mother, sew me up some, some curtains out of the linen fabric that I had, had found. Oh, let's see. This thing down here, I think we've talked about it before. Uh, this I added. Uh, you can get these off eBay for like 15, maybe 20 bucks, and make sure you get it in Fahrenheit. But it comes, uh, it's just a relay on the back. And of course, it's fully adjustable. I've got it set to 33 degrees right now. And that's in the center of my refrigerator. I guess I'll show you my refrigerator. I'm sure it's d disgusting in there. I don't say disgusting. I do keep it clean, but uh, there's not much in there. Single guy stuff. I keep it at about 35 during the summer uh, and 33 in the winter just so it'll run a little bit more. And I keep my frozen stuff frozen. Summertime, I keep ice cream in here. Wintertime's a little more of a challenge. Let's see how big this thing is. Got a little bit of beer back there, and my creamer, and some milk, and condiments, and eggs, and blah blah. But this is the uh, the evaporator plates. It's time to change it. Uh, this evaporator plates. Damn, I guess some light down in there. For the refrigerator, I cover them with aluminum foil because the ice doesn't stick to the foil. You couldn't do this on the paint of aluminum, but it just flakes right off. Even though sometimes it gets really thick. And you have to kind of tap it off, but yeah, as it builds up, you can really see back there, there's quite a bit build up. Let me get that one well, it's backwards in the camera. You can just flake this stuff off, but the, the foil does get beat up after a while. Uh, so you don't have to, to thaw it out nearly as often. Otherwise, it's like during the summertime when it runs a lot and there's a lot of humidity, you got to thaw the refrigerator out once a month or more, maybe twice. There's some chicken. That may be dinner. What is that? That's wings. Yeah, and we'll do some chicken wings on the grill for dinner. These are wine bags. I like my wine occasionally. I take it out of the box. We get a big bag that looks like blood. What you do when these things are empty, yeah, you don't really have to clean them out. Uh, just put it under the faucet, you know, squeeze it all the way down, put it under the faucet, get it filled back up with water. And because I got such a big i can show you that is my full arm length and it goes all the way back there and probably you know two and a half feet across it's big enough that i could actually get in there thing here it's a lots of condiments so i need to clean this thing out but it's, it's big enough that you could you could squeeze in there uh, I don't have that much stuff. I, you know, I go by the grocery store pretty often, so I put these bags in here. I say that one's not frozen, but I guarantee you it's right at it. But this one that's underneath the evaporator plates, it's a block of ice. It, it froze in about a week. So when I leave the dock, I don't, I don't, I don't buy ice anyway. But I don't need to put anything else in there. It does help to, to absorb some of the heat um, that would be normally have to. Cause the refrigerator and evaporator place to run. Actually, it just came on here a second ago. Hey, now we have a beer. There's out again. About, about two o'clock in the afternoon. So anyway, and and the bags they form. So if you have something uh, that if this did freeze and the other one did, you know, I, I actually formed it. I put something up here to keep it a little more square. And plus, I also put stuff underneath it like this chicken. I could. Now, if I got a little flatter, I could slide the whole thing up under there, and that would give me more freezer space, because this thing, it doesn't take long for it to get full. Let me see. You see how thick the ice is on the inside. Here we go. I don't have aluminum foil. Yeah, it is time to thaw that. Can you see how it flakes off that aluminum? I don't know why they don't make these out of something, but it would just flake off like that. Anyway. So I added that and there's a temperature sensor on the bottom of this. So, because I've got my hands in here, it's about 35 degrees right here. So down there on the very bottom, it's actually freezing, which is great for milk. Uh, you know, it's right at it where it doesn't actually freeze, but great for milk. Any, any meats like that you can keep down there for a long time without actually freezing. French press. Ran out of water, so I had to refill my tanks. Um, so I hadn't rinsed my French press yet. KitchenAid kettle. This is what I, I make my water for the French press with because I can push the button, go get in the shower, and it's ready to go when I 
when I come out uh, and dump it in my French press rather than putting stuff on something on the stove and just letting it boil and letting it boil. Good grief, we're up to 24 minutes already. So I guess we'll stop this one now. Uh, we have run on and on and on. Um, this may end up being two videos. Well, I think that's about it. Just, just living the dream here. Islander. I love, love the Islander Freeport. You get these. These will be replaced. These are on the list to be replaced before I go cruising. The little eyebrow windows. Which are great when you're down here. You know, you're down and you're you got the, the autopilot on. So you can you can stand up here on the companionway steps and look forward. Of course you can't really see this thing getting going focus like that. But you can look forward and see what's in front of you when you're down here making a sandwich or something, you know, rather than running up, checking, when you're motoring up and down the river, you gotta watch pretty frequently. Uh, I love those. And of course the big windows on the side and the big mirror. It really, really helps to reflect a lot of light and it makes it seem like a bigger space than it is. But yeah, some great things, plus the big cockpit. As long as you're not in a big storm and following seas. But this is home. This is Blue Springs Marina. Most of the sailboats are down there. They put the, the bigger ones down here. There used to be a couple of level boards down here. There used to be a lot more sailboats down here. But uh, we don't get the greatest view because of all the, the covered slips back here. But it's still a nice place. It's, it's really calm today. A couple of ducks swimming around over there, and I've only got, only got two neighbors. That was my old hatch over there, complete piece of crap. And a gill jacket, wore it one time, washed it. I've got a, now I do want to add this one. I do have a phone call in to Guild to see what they're going to do about this. I'm sure you missed that, but crap just came out everywhere. Washed it one time, and the seam tape and the liner just completely dissolved. So I'll either be praising them for taking care of a customer or telling you to go buy Mastato or Henry Lloyd or something else because this jacket was worn one time and I got something on the back of it. So I washed it. No dryer. Just normal, gentle wash. And it's completely falling apart. I'm rather pissed off about that. Alrighty. So... Um, yeah, I guess that's it. I thought I had uh, some more things to go over, but I think that's it. So, thanks for watching. Uh, keep in touch.